Community First Bank and Forest is committed to education in the forest area and is proud to support Forest Elementary in today's News 6. Local support has also been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV. Hi, I'm Jamie Kinn from Forest Elementary School. Welcome to News 6. With today's first story, here's Tiffany Justice. Have you ever wondered where your drinking water comes from? We talked to Kenton Quint at his water treatment plant to know more about how the water you drink is purified. Have you ever wondered where our water came from? Well, I did. We're here at Forest's water treatment plant. Where does our drinking water originally come from? The water for the village of Forest comes from two wells, which are located on site here at the water plant. They're approximately 200 feet deep. What does it mean to treat drinking water? Treating drinking water is the process of making it palatable to drink, which means it makes it good to taste and to be uh, used in the household to where you don't need as much soap. Plus, you want it to have the quality of being safe to drink with very little bacteria in it. How was it treated? The water is treated by pumping out of wells into the plant where we add lime and soda ash. The lime and soda ash is then settled out along with the hardness of the water to where it is then conditioned with chlorine. The purpose of the chlorine is to disinfect the water to where we take out the waterborne disease. After that it is filtered to where it enters your house it is crystal clear. What role do you play here at the plant? I am the water plant supervisor. I am in charge of five part-time employees and I am the only full-time employer here. I am in charge of the, of the welfare and the safety of over 1,500 people. What's the difference between drinking water and bottled water? The difference between the two is bottled water is far more expensive than what treated water is. Uh, bottled water might come from the same source as drinking water and it might not. There is very little regulations in bottled water while the treated water that we produce here is under heavy regulation set forth by the U.S. EPA. Thank you Paul Quint for telling us how your drinking how our drinking water is treated. Today's new sixth story is produced by the sixth grade class of Forest Elementary School. Our school is in the town of Forest, which is 60 miles south of Bowling Green. It was founded in 1854 and has a population of 1,594 people. Our next story is about a grandfather who collects tractors. Not toy tractors, but real ones. Norman Phillips restores antique tractors so they look brand new. Does he still use them for farming? Brian Phillips gives us more details. Hi, my name is Brian Phillips. I'm here today talking with my grandpa, Norman Phillips, about antique tractors. When and why did you start collecting tractors? Well, since uh, I was a kid and raised on a farm, and my grandfather and father farmed, and I turned out to be a farmer, and I developed a great interest for tractors, so I started collecting John Deere tractors, since that's the first tractor that we own. How many antique tractors are in your collection? Well, Brian, right now we have these three tractors that we have completely reconditioned, and at one time we had probably about 12, 14 in this building. And so we cleaned a lot of them out and we sold a bunch of them. Some of them went for parts and some of them went to other people who wanted to restore. What do you do with the tractors besides farming? We take the tractors to shows steam shows, tractor shows, and we just run around the farm here just uh, for the fun of it, I guess, and just something nice to look at. What's your favorite tractor model and why? My favorite tractor model would be the John Deere H. Uh, 1942, that was the first tractor that my dad and granddad bought, and so that's still my favorite. 
for giving us your time and showing us your tractors. And now we're tracking back to the studio. Don't you wish you had longer vacations and an unlimited supply of candies? Well, this week's Kids View question asks the sixth graders, if you have one wish, what would it be and why? Guess what we found out. Hi, this week's Kids View question is, if you could have one wish, what would it be and why? If I had one wish for the world, I would wish for a cure for AIDS. If I had one wish, it would be that there's no homeless people. <laughs> If I could have one wish, it would be for there to be no world pollution, so it would be a healthier place to live. Our final story today goes inside a factory that makes spare parts for racing cars. It takes a lot of teamwork to put together a finished product. As we shall see in this story, Ethan Hoy gives us a closer look at Buckeye Machine Company. Hi, my name is Ethan Hoy. I'm here interviewing my dad, Rick Hoy, about Buckeye Machine Company. What type of business is Buckeye Machine Company in? Uh, we're the builders of special machines for the uh, automotive and the appliance industry, such as uh, conveyors for uh, washers and dryers, uh, for uh, forklift trucks. How and why did Buckeye Machine get started? Uh, its owner, Mr. Marshall, uh, just had a vision in 1969 to open his own machine shop. And it started with uh, five employees, and he's grown to this today. We understand that Buckeye Machine is a family business. What role do they play? Well, Kathy, which is my wife, she's in accounting. And me, I'm, I'm Ray's son, and I'm uh, manager of the machine shop. What role does Buckeye play in the Indy 500? Well, we build the, uh, the gauging to check the aerodynamics of the uh, Indy 500 cars. What's the secret to a small town company becoming a big time success? Well, being in a small town, everybody knows everybody, and we employ people from Forest, and everybody works together as a team effort. Uh, and with the town people working here, we try to give back to the, the village, and such as uh, we donate to the uh, Little League uh, Baseball, uh, the Soccer League, the uh, new sport uh, field house out of the high school, and even the Midget uh, Football League. This week in Critics Corner, the 6th grade class of Forest Elementary selected The Sign of the Beaver by Elizabeth George Spear. This novel is about the strong friendship that develops between Matt and the teen after Matt and his father move to the wilderness. The friendship develops when a teen teaches Matt to appreciate American Indian culture. That's all for this week's show. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in next week when the 6th grade class of Lincoln View North Elementary visits News 6. Community First Bank in Forest is committed to education in the forest area and is proud to support Forest Elementary in today's News 6. Local support has also been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV.